the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all ready to praise him? Are y'all ready to give him glory? Yes. Amen. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that for name of Jesus. Yes. Greetings. Yes. You have now tuned in to the Unity Christian Church in Fayetteville, Georgia. So we want you to come on in. Come on over where the table is spread to get your praise on, to get your worship on, and to just have fun in the name of the Lord. Because on today, we are going to bless that wonderful name of the Lord because this is the day that God has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So get that prayer on your mind, get that one thing on your mind, and let's bless the wonderful name of the Lord. Healing in the name. And in the name of
bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Sweet ass name I know. It's the sweetest name I know. Now, I wouldn't mind having spiritual diabetes with that name because it's the sweetest name I know. And you can get healing from that name. You can get deliverance from that name. You can get restoration from that name. You can get salvation from that name. It is the sweetest name I know. So if any single ladies out there and you're looking for a good young man, his name is not sweeter than Jesus. Jesus has the only sweet name. Jesus is the only comforter that you can have. So we want to thank God because that is the sweetest name we know. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Right now, we want to thank our viewing audience for tuning in right now. And get that one thing on your mind that you're praying for. You might be praying for a loved one. You might be praying for your marriage. You, you, you might be praying for someone that's incarcerated, someone that's in the hospital. So get it on your mind, and let's go to the throne of grace right now. So we want to thank God, and we want to petition God right now with our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Father, right now, we pray right now that you send relief to those tornado victims right now, God. Oh, Father, send your comforter right now to, to comfort the survivors right now, God. We thank you and we praise you, God, right now. Have your way in their lives right now, God. Oh, Father, save that loved one right now. Father, save that friend, God, right now. Father, save that sinner right now, God. Oh, Father, right now. You said that we, we're not in need of a physician, but you are the one that we're in need for, Father, right now. So, Father, you be the physician right now, God, for that sin-sick soul right now, Father. We thank you and we praise you for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father, on today, God. Oh, Father, we thank you for spreading the table for us and preparing the tables for the presence of our enemies right now, God. Oh, Father, we thank you and we praise you. Bless your people on today, God. Bless the churches on today, God. Bless the pastors on the day, God. Bless their families on the day, God. Bless the members on the day, God. Bless the musicians on today, God. Have your way, God. We thank you and we praise you. These are many blessings we pray in Jesus' name. And before we close this prayer, God, we want to bless, want you to bless all the praise teams across the land right now, God. And have your way and the choirs. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Now, our morning scripture will be coming from Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6. And this is a very familiar passage of scriptures. So if you're at home, uh, if you don't have your Bibles with you, it should be on the screen, and you just read along with us. And it begins at verse 1, Psalms 23, the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Y'all can read along. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen, and amen. I love that last part where it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Not just today, not just yesterday, not for an hour, but forever. 
And now, right now, if you want to continue to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, y'all come on and get with the praise team because God is blessing us and the devil thought he had us, but uh, we got away. And now, the praise team. Amen. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Amen. This is a part of service everybody can take a part in. Amen. Amen. We will worship the Lord. We will worship the Lord. We pray. We pray. Yeah. 
all his ways. Hallelujah. And he is the great I am. He is the great I am. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You raise Say that I love you more than 
Yes, Lord. More than anything. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Lord, I love you more than anything. Anybody here love Jesus more than anything? I love you, Lord. Do you Lord, really love, love him today? Do you really love him today? If so, I believe we can get on one accord and just say, Lord, I love you more, more than, anything. than anything. There are any children in the house who desire and parents desire for your children to go to children's church. They may go at this time as we continue to bask in the very thought of how much we love Jesus. He does so much for us. Even when we're not asking for it, he's still doing it. That's what love is all about. You can't pay for this. And while we're thinking about how much we love him, let's go to his throne where we can truly thank him for being so good to us and beseech him for his continued favor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you are doing right now in your house. We thank you, O oh Lord, for those who are listening from their very homes or other places, this live stream that's emanating from your house here at Unity. We don't take your blessings for granted. We just thank you so much for another day in your presence. And now, Lord, as we prepare to go forward in your service, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move in this land, move in this atmosphere right now. As I decrease now, I pray that you would increase. Let every word that's spoken be a word that you desire to have presented into this air. And we thank you right now for your continual love and it's in the name of Jesus that we do pray. And it is so. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you, people of our Lord. You may be seated. And we truly thank God for his blessings, his many fold blessings. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you who are here and those of you who are viewing this broadcast and you've already been greeted by Minister Fountain and we thank God that he has brought you into our midst right now by way of technology. And for those who are here today, I thank God for each and every one of you who have entered into the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. Today is the third Sunday in the year 2023, the month of January. This year has already moved forward to three Sundays. And during this month, we just want you to be attentive even more to getting your pace right for 2023. Continuing to ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do as a new creation that you've allowed me to see a new year, Lord? Don't let it be the same old me that ended 2022. Why? Because we want to always be growing into the things of God. We want to always be growing in our knowledge and understanding of what God desires for us to do in a way that will bring him the glory. So I greet you now in the name of our Lord and Savior, once again, Jesus the Christ. And we want to share a word with you on today from the Old Testament. I want to go into the book of Joshua, chapter 8. Reading two verses, verses, verses 14 and 15. And thank God for, amen, the praise team set in the atmosphere to just focus on how much God really loves us and how much we should really love him. Reading from the NASB, these two verses from our opening scripture today, Joshua chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. And if you don't have your Bible, we 
Amen. Believe and pray and know that this word will be on your screen and on the monitors here in the room in the sanctuary. The word of the Lord declares, Joshua 8, 14. It came about when the king of Ai saw it, that the men of the city hurried and rose up early and went out to meet Israel in battle. He and all his people at the appointed place before the desert plain. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel pretended to be beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. While you're standing, and for those of you who are viewing, as is our custom, would you please repeat this corporate prayer? Just repeat after me, and amen. Get us all on one accord praying the same thing. Just say, Lord Jesus, please prepare my ears to hear your word. Prepare my heart to receive your word. Prepare my eyes to see that your word is alive. And prepare my body to be your temple for the living word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We want to talk to you for a few minutes today from this one word. I want to talk to you. We want to talk to you about distractions. We want to talk about distractions. There's one thing that we need to, amen, just talk about very briefly. This is Emil King day weekend. Tomorrow is the holiday that we celebrate the very birth of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His actual birthday was on January the 15th, which is today. So we are here on January the 15th, and we truly thank God that he saw fit to send a type of Moses, a modern-day Moses, into this land. Dr. King was a chief spokesperson for nonviolent activism in the civil rights movement. Special people for a special time. They endured so much and had a razor focus that no matter what came after them, they were locked in on what their purpose was. Distractions were all about them, but they were locked down into what they knew they needed to do. And it's truly a blessing to be able to acknowledge the fact within the United States of America that civil rights were and continues to be very important. Oh, are there obstacles to it? Of course. You think you're going to continue to get, go forward without there being some obstacles? That's not the way the world works. But we are so thankful for what God has already done and through those uh, valiant civil rights leaders. Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. President Ronald Reagan signed the holiday, MLK holiday, into law in 1983, and it was first observed three years later. At first, some of the states resisted observing this holiday, giving it alternative names or combining it with other holidays, but it has now and is officially observed and was officially observed in all 50 states for the first time in 2000. Amen. That's right. Amen. We can give God some praise for the journey and for what we see the Lord continues to do. Dr. King has a statement that he has one of his quotes. He has so, so many, so many favorite quotes. But there's one quote that he said that he said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. That's so appropriate, isn't it? 
People can make a whole lot of excuses for why something cannot be done. I don't have what they have. They have more favor than I have. Whatever you have, use it, not only to help yourself to go forward, but to help to give God glory as we fight against sin. Our fight is against sin. It's sin that brings forth hate. It's sin that brings forth, amen, the, uh, the attitudes of other people who think they can oppress a nation of people or a group of people or people who don't look like they look or who don't think like they think or whatever it might be. Sin, hatefulness, is at the very heart of things that want to defeat people in such a way that they don't even know that up is up and down is down. So when we talk about distractions, we know that, amen, life has a way of changing our goals. If we don't stay focused, distractions will hinder us and sometimes will make us just want to give up. The word distraction is, is, is something that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. In the Bible, it is to be, it means to be wholly, I'm sorry, to be overly occupied about a thing, to be drawn away. Isn't that Satan's plan? Isn't that his purpose? To draw us away from our intent, to draw us away from, amen, our desire to follow God, to want to be the vessel that God desires for us to be. He wants to put things in place and in front of us that causes us to move away from God's stated purpose for our lives. To be distracted from doing evil is a very good thing. But to be distracted from focusing on what's good and walking in obedience to God is a very bad thing. Therefore, a distraction can produce either a negative or a positive result. And in the word of God here in Joshua uh, chapter 8, we find that the nation of Israel is outside of a little small city by the name of Ai. When Joshua and the Israelites first came into the promised land, their first battle was against Jericho. And because they were able to defeat Jericho, a large walled-in city, they began to feel themselves. They began to think that, amen, we can defeat anything and we really don't even have to worry about what we see or how we're living or who's doing what in our midst. So we just, just need to just keep moving on because we already know how bad we are. And see, when you look at Joshua chapter 6, Verses 18 and 19, we begin to find out that, amen, if there is a distraction that happens in the hearts or in the mind of people, it can have a negative impact on others as well as themselves. What am I saying? In Joshua chapter 6, verse 18 and 19, just to, amen, set the stage here just a little bit before we walk right into chapter 8, let me give you a little background here. Joshua 6, verses 18 and 19. God had told Israel that when they went into battle to fight against Jericho, that he had determined that, amen, that whole place, Jericho, was considered to be cursed. And anything that was in there, people were not supposed to touch it because it was supposed to be totally destroyed. God was moving, and he wanted them to get it in their spirit that you don't play around with the things that's evil. That whole place had been determined to be evil in God's eyes because, amen, the life that the people were living, the, the gods that they were worshiping, and all of these things, God was sending his people in there to lift up a standard. So he told them, don't touch anything. Joshua 6, verses 18 and 19 says this. But as for you, only keep yourselves from the things under the ban. Under the ban. The ban means what? Don't bother it. Don't touch it. It's been banned from you. It's a curse to you. So that you do not covet them. There's one thing about that word coveting, isn't it? Amen. Coveting, desiring to have good things, there's nothing wrong with that. But God said, do not covet. 
Coveting is something that takes full control and it can mess up the way that you view things. It can mess up the way that you even see God. It can mess up your appreciation for who God is. You want what everybody else has and it takes you to a place that you can't even praise God for who he is. So the Bible says, amen, so that you do not covet them and take some of the things that I have placed under the ban and make the camp of Israel accursed and bring trouble on it but all the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord they shall go into the treasury of the Lord so God had cursed that town and he had told them amen that anybody who coveted what was in there and did some bad things amen who allowed lust to be conceived and what what does the Bible say when lust is conceived it brings forth sin And lust can come from a whole lot of different places, right? From our eyes, from our heart, from our spirit. We know that the pride of life and all of these things, these are not things that will bring God glory. So God was speaking and he spoke very clearly and he had already demonstrated his power to his people. We know that God is powerful. We know that he heals. We know that he delivers. We know that God will lift us up when there's no other person who can help us. Amen. Will you have troubles and trials and tribulations in this world? Of course you will. How else will you know that God is able to do it if you never experience it? So God allows us to have things to come at us so that when he heals, he alone gets the glory. Israel was on the move. Man, it's good to be on the move, isn't it? When you can see yourself moving, amen, just don't start smelling yourself. Old people, the people just say, don't, don't smell yourself now. Think that it's all about you and you did all of this in your own strength and nobody else helped you along the way. Uh, God was nowhere in the atmosphere when you were being blessed. The Bible said when you do things like that, amen, you have positioned yourself to be cursed. Who in here wants to be cursed? Let me see your hand. See no hand. Who want to be blessed? Oh, my God. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. And the Bible says, and it adds no sorrow to it. When people think that they go after money, 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 and then all they have is trouble, 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 that's not a blessing. When the Bible is blessing you, you won't have all that sorrow in your life. You'll be able to look to the hills from where your help come and smile at the Lord God of your salvation. So the Bible says, amen, let me get back to this. So God told them, do not touch anything in Jericho. There was a man by the name of Achan who decided, I'm going to do what I want to do. And he saw this stuff and he coveted it. So he took it and he hid it. And because he did that and nobody in the camp of Israel had the spirit of the living God within them to call him out. He hid it. And everybody just kept moving as if everything was fine. It's interesting to me. Let me let, let, let me look at another scripture here real quick. So it was this one man who disobeyed God. One man who hid the accursed things, the things that were under the ban. Joshua chapter 7 verses 1 and 2 said this. But the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully in regard to the things under the ban. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zapdad, the son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel. Now, one man did this. But yet and still, the Bible says that God's anger burned against all of Israel. Can't you see these Israelites saying, Lord, why are you going to punish me? I didn't do that. The same thing happens in the church, isn't it? When you hear about one or two bad things happening within a church, they don't say family A in church B messed up. No, they said those people over there at that church. You see what, what they do over there at that church? It may be only one or two people that you hear about, but the whole church. Gets that reputation. Why? Because God never intended for us to walk alone. And we're united by God. We're united in his spirit. We're united in purpose. So when when you belong to UCC, what you do can have an impact on your brother or your sister here in UCC. It can be positive or it can be negative. And so when this man disobeyed, he uh, disobeyed God. When the children of Israel said, let's go up and fight against Ai. 
They went up to fight against AI. They said, we don't even have to send the whole army. We're just going to send 3,000 soldiers up there. They are just so small. We don't even have to worry about sending the army up there. The Bible said they went up there and they ran back defeated. 36 of them died. None of them died in the Battle of Jericho. They lost 36, amen, soldiers, military, warriors, simply because of the sin of one man. And they did not know there was sin in their midst. Why? Was that nobody praying? Was that nobody asking God, Lord, are we ready? Are we positioned to go up and to continue to get the victory when we go forward? Anybody here pray when you come to church? Anybody pray before you come to church? Anybody pray when you get up and get before you go to work? Anybody pray before you leave your house, before you enter and go out into the street? A prayer life is so important for the spirit of God to speak back to you when you're driving to work and you normally go this route and there's something that says, don't go that way. If you hadn't been praying, you can't hear from God. If you don't have a relationship, you can't hear from God. You'll keep going right on down that path and you'll go, why did I go that way? The spirit of God will lift up a standard. Amen. And he will take you to a place. So back to this story here so I can, amen, get to chapter 8 and we can wrap this up. So God allowed Israel to be defeated by this little small place called Ai. And once they lost that battle, the king of Ai puffed up his chest. He said, I thought these people were supposed to be something. You ever heard anybody see somebody who belongs to church? They said, do you go to church? Yeah, well, why do you live like this? Why do you talk like that? Why do you laugh at this type of stuff? I thought you were supposed to represent your God. God has a standard. He said, come out from among them and be separated. Why do you think the Bible said that? So we can draw others into where God wants us to be instead of us being drawn into that distraction. It's nothing but a distraction to keep you from growing. Every time you leave your center place with God, you lose territory. God don't want us to lose territory. He wants us to gain territory. Israel had lost some territory. They went in, amen, and they came back defeated. So now, amen, Joshua is crying out to God. He said, Lord God, why did you bring us in here? Why didn't you, you just leave us on the other side of the Jordan where we would do nothing but be happy and not even worry about this promised land? God said, get up from there and stop crying. He said, the reason why you lost is there's sin in the midst. He said, get rid of the sin. When you eliminate the sin from your midst, then you will be able to experience the victory that I have for you. And so once they found out, amen, God showed them about the lots and all that, they, they discovered who it was who had caused them to lose. So Joshua 7, 24, 25 says this. Once they identified that it was Achan, the judgment of God came down strong. God was not playing in this Old Testament. God was demonstrating the fact of judgment. Amen. And today we walk in the love and the mercy and the grace of God. But there's still a judgment that's going to come. So the Old Testament shows us that when God's judgment comes, it comes in full force. Nobody wants to experience the fullness of God's judgment. That's why we still cry for what? Mercy and grace, God. Joshua 7, 24, 25 says this. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the mantle, the bar of gold, all of that stuff that he hid, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that belonged to him, to him. And they brought them up to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with, with stones. God is saying, remove the evil from your midst. So he's talking about our own temples. He's talking about us. When we do a self-evaluation and there's some things, amen, that we realize that we are still wrestling with, God said, I know that you're wrestling with it. You're not hiding it from me. So bring it to me so I can deal with that and we can remove that out of the way. And when I take care of it, it's going to be really taken care of. If you sincerely, sincerely give it to me, I will truly and sincerely take care of it for you. So that was the setup here. Now in chapter 8, this is what we want to share with you just for a few minutes here. In chapter 8, verse 1, 
Now the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear or be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. All of the things that you think is never going to show up for you when God gives you the promise, stand on the promises of God. Don't give the devil the privilege and the, uh, uh, you know, the honor that he is not due. Don't put him into a place where he does not deserve. He does not control your destiny. God controls your destiny. When you put him in a place where God should be occupying, then you have taken God and moved him off of the throne. When you move God off of the throne, something else is going to take that spot. You're going to either try to occupy it yourself or Satan is going to already be sitting there. It's a time to evict him and get rid of the distractions that want to make him take control of your blessings. He don't bless you. You get blessings from God. Oh, my God. I, thank you, Lord. Uh, it came about. They went up. They rose up early. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 8. Uh, verse 2. You shall do to Ai, Joshua 8 and 2. You shall do to Ai and his king just as you did to Jericho and his king. That's what they wanted at the beginning. Victory. God is now saying, you're going to do it now. Why? Because you have removed the evil from your midst. And because the people recognize my power, now they have all yielded their vessel in their heart to me. Now you're moving in one accord again. And God said, now, you shall do this. Not that you might. You shall do this. You shall take only his spoil and his cattle as plunder for yourself. Did anybody catch that? God now told them, look at what he told them. You shall take only his spoil and his cattle as plunder for yourself. Achan was stealing the plunder when God told him to leave it alone. If he had just been patient, he would have been able to get the plunder. He would have been able to keep the stuff for himself. Don't try to get in front of God. He has your welfare. He's going to bless you. You're trying to do it in your own strength. God said, if you do it my way. And then he said, set an ambush for the city behind it. What? Set an ambush for the city Behind it. When you go into warfare, if an army is overconfident, all they're concerned about is what's right in front of them. Satan has been watching us for a long time. And when he has been using tactics on us that have been working, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to continue to use the same tactics that have been working all this time. The king of Ai said, hey, here they come again. We've already whipped them once. They're coming at us the same way. Don't you see them? God said, set an ambush. See what Joshua did. He split up his military. He split some to the east, some to the north. And the ones that were amen, in front of the city of Ai, the king was only concerned about them. He said, here they are. Don't you see them? Let's go out and give them another whipping. The nerve of them. But God don't deal with evil the same way that we think, amen, said the devil think he's going to come at him. God is stronger and smarter than anything that evil has ever conceived of. When the devil is looking for it to come one way, now this is when a distraction is going to work for you good. You got to, amen, prove to Satan that he don't have you pegged. You got to prove to him that he can't figure you out. You don't belong to him. How can he know what God is telling you? How can he know what God is instructing you to do unless you always move the same predictable way that Satan know, here they come. So God said, set an ambush for him. Do something different. Set some forces behind. And when you pray to me, I'm going to show you where to position yourself. I'm going to show you when to come out. I'm going to show you what's going to happen when you do. I'm going to show you when you need to remain, stand still, and see my salvation. But when I say go, get ready to go. So the Bible said, amen, that they set the ambush from behind them. So everybody is in position now. In that morning when they got up to go to fight, the king looked out. Amen. Joshua 8, 14. This is where we read. Let's read this again. Joshua 8, chapter 14. The Bible says this. It came about 
When the king of Ai saw it, when the devil looked and saw you coming, that the men of the city hurried and rose up early and went out to meet Israel in battle. They're going to work the same way. They're going to say the same thing when they get there. They're going to, amen, fall prey to the same mess. They're going to get angry at the same thing. They're going to get upset when their supervisor don't give them what they wanted this week. And then they ask for it again. And they ask for it again. And now they are cursing out everybody on the floor. They come to, they see you when you come, but this is a warfare. People don't realize that everything that you do, every part of your life, it can be considered a spiritual warfare. Because if you don't get the victory over the small things, how do you think you can handle the big things? There are some big things that's waiting. Amen. But you got to be ready. You got to be prayed up. You got to be fasted up. You got to have confidence and faith in the one who has been giving you victory over the small things to know that he's the same God who will give you the victory over whatever the devil can bring your way. Will you have to endure some stuff? Of course you will. Will you have to continue to cry out to God? Of course you will. That should make you stronger because you're getting closer. And the Bible says that, amen, verse 19, the men, I'm sorry, verse uh, 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 16, and all the people who were in the city, were, I'm sorry, 15, I'm sorry, forgive me, 15, Joshua and all Israel pretended to be beaten before them. See, Joshua went out in front of them, and when they attacked, just like they always have, Joshua started running. Joshua started running because what? He was the distraction. He was the one that was saying, okay, come on out from behind your little walls. Come and chase me, and I'm going to pretend to be the rabbit and you're the hound. Come on, run after me. And when they chased Joshua, they left the whole city unguarded. When Satan thinks he got you, he don't worry about what he's leaving behind. All his focus is, I'm going to beat you from pillar to post. I'm going to take you down because you are not strong enough to handle me. So why would I need to worry about your reinforcements? You don't have no reinforcement. You don't have nobody praying with you. You, don't, you haven't asked God to do nothing special in your life. You just get up every day with the same mindset and the same attitude. Where are your reinforcements coming from? Ooh, Joshua went out there, he, he came out after Joshua and the few that he had with him and they started running and Satan started chasing them and as soon as he left the city unguarded, Joshua gave the sign and the men who were in ambush, sitting in the bushes, they came from behind, they went into the city, they burned down everything that the devil owned and then they came chasing the devil. They trapped. AI's army in between Joshua who was running and the ones who were coming behind. Once Joshua saw the smoke of the city going up when you see the sign of victory. Hallelujah. When you see the sign of victory, don't keep running. Turn and look at that devil. Eyeball to eyeball. Joshua turned. He looked at him. Satan said, whoa, what is this? What are they doing? Then he looked around and saw there were reinforcements that were prayer warriors coming from the back. And now the devil is trapped. He got the army coming from the rear, and he got Joshua who turned and coming to attack him. Now the devil is defeated. Now they want to run, but he can't run. That distraction was to take control of what you had lost. You had lost territory, but God said you lost it because you keep trying it in your own strength, and you keep trying it the same way. God said, I'm going to order your steps and direct your path. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you how to do it. And when you follow me, you'll be just like Joshua. Now that distraction that was used against Satan. Now you can take, amen, the thing that Satan thinks he knows about you, and you can turn it around. And you can mess him up. And the people who meant you evil, they'll end up doing you good. When they think they got you knocked down, they'll end up helping you to get up. They talked about you, and your supervisor already heard some stuff. You know, uh, you think that they don't know what's going on. But as long as you stay steadfast and unmovable and continue to live the life that you got to live, amen, when the people who want to bring you down think that they got you knocked down, there's a trap that's been laid for them, and they don't even know it. And then they say, well, wait a minute. How could you accuse him of this when he was right there with me and you didn't know it because we had a personal conversation going on? Oh, well, I thought that that was him. No, you didn't. You've been lying all this time. Now you've been caught between the front and the back. 
Hey, hallelujah. God said, if you give me your strength, if you give me your trust, if you give me your faith, I will bless you. I will deliver you. You don't have to figure it out. Just receive my instructions and then do what I tell you to do. It's time to move forward, church. It's time to give God glory. Satan's been trying to distract us, but no longer. We're going to distract him. We're going to distract him with praise. Every time you praise God, it messes up his ears. Every time you look up to heaven, it messes up his eyes. Every time you fall on your knees, it messes up his strength. It's time to give God some glory. It's time to say hallelujah. It's time to say thank you, Jesus. It's time to say here I am, God. Use me for your glory. Take control of my life. Bless my home. Bless my family. I need you today. I can't do it today. I can't do it tomorrow. But with you, all things are possible. Satan, get behind me. You have no authority. Satan, get back. You don't know who you're messing with. I belong to the master. I belong to my God. Somebody tell God, thank you. No, come on, tell him, thank you. Don't let Satan distract you now. You got to tell God, thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you for who you are. And it's only because of Jesus that we have the relationship with you. It's only because of what Jesus has already done for each and every one of us that we can have the confidence and the assurance of knowing, Lord, that when I call on you, you hear me. And when you hear me, I know that I will receive the things that I'm petitioning you for. Lord, I stand in full faith, nothing wavering, nothing doubting. Help me to remove all negative distractions. But Father, let me move in a way that will blow the devil's mind. Let me be a distraction to him when he tries to come against my family. Let me be a distraction to him. When he tries to mess up your destiny for me, let me be a distraction to him. When I call on your name, it confuses him. He don't speak our language. He don't understand our relationship. He's distracted and he's confused. But Father, we love you today and we bless you your holy name. If you are not saved, you don't know Jesus, you don't have access to this special relationship and instruction from God without Jesus. If you're viewing this broadcast and you're not saved and you desire to give your life to the Lord today, I ask that you prepare your heart to repeat this prayer of salvation and repentance that we're about to pray. And if you mean in your heart what you're about to say I guarantee you according to the word of God you will be saved and if you're saved you can grow in the things of God the first step is your salvation second step is your growth if you're here today and you're here in the atmosphere of the worship area here or you're viewing just prepare your heart to repeat this prayer after me just say Lord Jesus please forgive me for all of my sins whatever is wrong I will no longer do but whatever is right that will I do I thank you Jesus for dying for me I thank you Jesus for being resurrected for me so that whenever I come up a little short in my walk and I repent and pray in your name. I know that I am forgiven. Come into my heart now. Be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray today. We stand here under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we ask you to give us insight, give us direction. Take us, oh God, into your bosom and reveal your will for our lives. 
and then give us a heart and a will and the strength to focus on you and you alone and let no coveting spirit interrupt our communication. Father, we just ask you to bless your people today. We're praying for healing. Yes, we are. We're praying for deliverance. Yes, we are. We're praying that you will save our loved ones. Yes, we are. We're praying that our relationship with you will be uninterrupted and that we will always be found living a life that will give you glory and praise. And now, Lord, as we prepare to go out into and among those who don't even know you, who don't even care to know you, we pray that you will use us to be a distraction, to confuse the enemy, to destroy every strategy and tactic that he has. And Father, we pray that you will get the glory, that lives will be saved, hearts will be changed, Relationships will be mended in a way that will bring you praise and glory. And now, Father, as we go forward from this place today, but not from your presence, we pray that you will go out before us and cover the highways and byways with your precious blood. We pray that no hurt, harm, or danger will befall us as we go. And when we arrive at our appointed destinations, we will go in and give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. We go in peace and we sin no more. God bless you. If you have any all at the beginning of this year or any time during the year, as a matter of fact, you have any all that you would like to be prayed over, just bring it and put it on the altar. We want to pray over the oil. It's symbolic of the Holy Presence and it helps to quicken our faith and our confidence in our Lord and our Savior. Stay tuned for the announcements that will show on your screen. God bless you. May heaven smile in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen.